Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at an aircraft hydraulic system and uh, explaining how it works and kind of how they designed it the way they did. So for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to be taking a look at the Boeing 737-700, which is uh, one of these lovely PMDG aircraft that goes into a lot of detail. Keep in mind there are other aircraft that have very, very complicated systems, and we'll take a peek at one of those a little bit later on in the video. But for now, we're going to stick kind of this aircraft to kind of understand what's going on and kind of how to deal with it if something comes up in the air. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, what is a hydraulic system? Uh, this aircraft, of course, is uh, fairly large and it weighs uh, quite a bit. And we have this lovely little yoke that sits behind our lap. And you can see I'm working the controls really hard right now, but you can see the yoke is barely moving. And that's because that you have these gigantic control surfaces located around your aircraft. And um, in the event that we hit a situation where uh, there's nothing, if we had to actually, uh, it's so much hard to move, the problem we get is we have these very, very heavy chunks of metal, and plus we have the slipstream of very, very high velocity air combining to make it physically impossible to move these controls by muscle alone. It just can't exist. So very, very large aircraft, uh, once you get past a certain size, are always going to have systems called hydraulic, typically, although there's electric pneumatic as well, to help push the controls into the position that you desire that they want to be in. Now, if we did not have these systems, uh, we'd basically, as you can tell from me trying to work this yoke here, uh, we'd be in a world of hurt because we literally could not move the controls to operate the airplane. Now, a hydraulic system you know, works on the basic principle that if you squeeze a liquid, it doesn't like that, which now means we can use that for the purposes of making it do work. So basically, you're going to have a pump, which is going to provide us with pressure. We're going to have a reservoir, which is going to hold the hydraulic fluid. And then we're going to have things like actuators and uh, pistons that are actually going to be doing all the work of the hydraulic system. Now, on our aircraft here, we have about four different hydraulic pumps available to us. Um, we have a couple different ones on System A. We have a couple different on System B here. You'll notice we have engine-driven as well as electrical pumps. Now, the interesting thing we have here, which I think is very fascinating about this particular design of this aircraft, is all these hydraulic pumps are designed to work on the same sets of items. And they're designed in such a way that if one set of hydraulic pumps is available and not the other, it's basically going to prioritize where the pressure is going to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by engaging the two engine hydraulic pumps here. Now, the reason I did that is I'm gonna flip my head down here and you're gonna observe the fact that we have no hydraulic pressure. And you're sitting there going, yeah, thank you, Sherlock. Uh, my engine's not turning. Obviously, we're not gonna have any hydraulic pressure. Good, I'm glad everybody was aware of that because uh, one of the things that the older engines did is if you ran the hydraulic pumps when you started it, it could actually make it challenging to start. 727, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap that off, and I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and activate the A system. This is gonna be the electrical system on the left-hand side. And what you're gonna observe is that uh, we have plenty of hydraulic quantity, and we have a pressure of about 3,000 PSI. Now, if I come back outside and I start moving my controls, you're gonna see that there's absolutely no difficulty whatsoever to move the controls themselves around. You know, my rudder is happily going, and then I got all my spoilers, and everything seems to be rolling pretty fast. It might be slightly delayed, but uh, nothing too, too bad at all. And that is because we are on the A system. Now, the way that the 737 breaks its hydraulic systems apart is if I actually stick my head up here, you're going to observe the fact that we have two different systems acting on the flight control simultaneously. You'll notice on flight control A, see where it says A on. So if I were actually to come up here and pop this off real quickly here, I'd actually be popping the flight controls off of system A, which now if you, I'm moving my controls, and nothing's happening. And the reason for that is because I've basically shut off that path of that hydraulic pressure. Now, if I flip back up here and I go ahead and slam that thing back closed again, and I jump back outside, you'll observe the fact that now I can direct hydraulic pressure back to my actual flight controls themselves. So that works directly. So the next thing we're going to have a problem with, and uh, this is going to be an interesting one, is let's go ahead and shut off the A system and go ahead and flip on the B system and go ahead and snap it like that. Because the way they engineer this aircraft, you have two different systems acting on my flight controls at any time, which now means I can actually still operate all of my controls without any difficulty whatsoever. You can see it operates perfectly fine. Now, if you actually come up here where it goes flight control, you can see there's actually a switch. If I needed to, I can actually snap that system off in the event that that particular unit it has failed. Now that's again the nice thing. You can also pop off your spoilers if you need to be really, really silly or something along those lines. Now where it gets interesting, of course, is your other hydraulic components on an aircraft, namely your flaps and your really, really important landing gear and brakes. Now that's, like I said, that's where things get kind of interesting for us here. Now if I were to go ahead and uh, deploy some flaps here, keep in mind I'm only on system B here. One, two, three, four. I'll go ahead and I'll give it four clicks of flaps there. And you can see that uh, the aircraft is uh, kind of sitting there and um, 
nothing's happening. And now the aircraft just uh, kind of depressurizes a little bit here. That's because on the 737, it's engineered so that in the event that we lose one hydraulic system, we will not be able to put down our flaps. It's uh, prioritizing basically being able to push our controls around. Now, in this particular aircraft, uh, what they did to make our lives a little bit simpler is they gave us an alternative flaps handle. Now, if I actually turn the sucker on, I can now manually crank the flaps. Now, when I say manually, I mean it's going to take a lifetime of manual cranking to actually get this thing to go anywhere. And I don't think I'll be able to sh demonstrate this aspect of the problem here. We are on APU or we're on GPU right now. Yeah, we're on ground power. Okay, well, okay I'm just trying to see if I can get any amps to get a reading on that. Uh, okay, that's good. DC amps. That's good enough for me. Now, what you do on this one is you'd sit here and you crank on this, and this would electrically lower the flaps. And you can actually see right there. I can't. I'm run out of fingers to push mouse buttons on here, but you can see it's it's going, it's going, it's cranking, it's cranking. Oh, see, we're almost to flaps too. So uh, one of the interesting things is in emergency procedures for a 737 is they basically say, um, please don't do this if you don't have to, or you can't actually get your flaps back up quickly. So it actually creates an interesting problem. Now, if I come over here and flip on electric system too, watch this. The flaps are like, oh, thank you for that hydraulic pressure. I will now happily deploy myself and I'll be ready to go. So one of the interesting things they'll actually do is if you do use alternate flaps on this aircraft, they don't recommend you attempt to retract them because uh, you just... <laughs> You won't have time. And the other thing they tell you to do is not to go past 15 because you'll never, <laughs> you just don't have the opportunity, basically, kind of a situation like that. So it's actually very interesting how that actual system works in that case. So as you can see, that isolating the two systems has advantages. If one gets leaky, I can still control the aircraft. Now, you're probably saying, what happens if I'm flying and I lose both systems? Now, the nice thing about a 737 is uh, they engineered it in such a way that you have what they call a reversion, which is going to give you a little tiny bit of control here. You can actually see that I still have some pressure left on my system so I can move it. But as the pressure starts to wear out, you're going to notice this teeny, teeny little tab, which actually becomes the item that I'm going to be deflecting to deflect the rest of the control. A lot of times, too, is we still have the ability to control the stabilator position as well. You can see the trim lines on that right away. And that would actually give us that enhanced ability. Notice, by the way, since we had the hydraulic failure that our flaps are like, um, I refuse to um, put myself up. You can push this button all afternoon and nothing's going to happen because there's nothing to basically move them the other way. So now these suckers would just be dangling in mid-flight, giving you all sorts of, uh, you know, aerodynamic interests. Now, Airbus has a very different philosophy when it comes to hydraulic systems. And what they've opted to do is actually go with a triple hydraulic system, which is actually very common on many of these Airbus-style aircraft. And what they actually do is they label the different systems based on different colors and kind of different priorities. Now, one of the things that I find very, very interesting about these particular systems is you'll notice that we have an additional switch here for RAT. What this is, is this is a ram air turbine, which is a little mini hydraulic pump that can actually drop off the side of the aircraft, which come off on the bottom on the left. And what that can do is that can actually provide us with extra pressure to this particular system. Now, one of the things you probably observe here is on the Airbus, you can see kind of the flow of all the pressure coming out. We have our PTU, which is basically kind of our ground sort of a hydraulic pump if we need it. And you can see it actually completely bypasses the blue system here. And all the priority pressure basically goes into this particular system here, even independent of the two engine pumps. We also have a backup electric pump, which unfortunately in the base model, I know working titles got all these switches working, but we don't have them. But you can see exactly kind of how those different components work themselves out. Another thing I find very interesting on an Airbus system is when it comes to the pressure, you'll observe the fact that we have an accumulator pressure here. This is actually for the brakes particular system here. And you can see here, as long as our brakes are engaged in a certain way, this of course should be deflecting coming up and down, but it does not. But we have a little bit of backup pressure in the event that one of our pumps fails. Plus we have the turbine, which can provide us extra pressure in the event that both of our engines and electricals fail. Um, of course, why do hydraulic systems usually fail? It's because they leak. And again, if you have no hydraulic fluid, you're not gonna have a very successful system. So by quickly switching over to an Airbus A310, you can actually have a better look at this. And one of the cool things I find here is if you actually look at my brakes, the parking brakes are engaged. If I disengage the brakes, notice that the brake pressure actually decreases. If I hit them again, notice the pressure doesn't increase more because we've actually sucked some of that pressure out of the accumulator for the purposes of engaging our brakes. So the warning here is uh, don't keep tapping your parking brake on and off or you're going to run out of pressure here and there's nothing going to be stopping you from moving. But realistically, the reason I pulled out the 310 here is it makes it very, very easy to see kind of their philosophy as far as the design goes. Uh, right now, if I were to wiggle my controls around, you can see nothing happens. As a matter of fact, you can see uh, my <laughs> these guys just sort of chilling right now going, because there's nothing holding them up. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and actually show you how they designed them differently. 
So coming up here, oh, you can see that I've got our three systems here. Our blue system's got a little bit of pressure left on it, which doesn't surprise me. Yellow and green, it says that we have pressure, but we really definitely do not. This actually, I'm sorry, this is quantity, not pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and turn on the PTUB pump. So what that's going to do is that's going to be pressurizing that system on that side. So if you come down here, and I'll come take a quick little look, you can see that we get a little bit of pressure on that particular component. Okay, yeah, I was right. These were the reservoir quantities. But giving it a wiggle around, uh, you can see that we still have absolutely nothing because of the way that the PTU works in this particular aircraft. Now, if I come over here and I select the electric pumps on, things change a little differently here. What's going to happen is you're going to observe the fact that now that the PTU pump is on the left side and that we've engaged an electrical pump in the middle, we basically allowed the other systems to start pushing themselves on. Notice the way they've engineered it, however, that by engaging this one, and by, let me go ahead and disengage that one real quickly here. By engaging electrical pumps, you're basically allowing those other two systems to operate. Otherwise, everything is going to be going into the green system here. And you can see we basically closed those two off. Now, of course, you'll notice that our controls are a little different now. If I wiggle my controls up and down, you know, let me go out and zoom out a little bit so you can see it. I can pull back and forth. You can see my elevator's happy. You can also see that we have some aileron control as well while that is going. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pop on our two external ones. Our two. These are very, very obnoxious pumps. They're very loud. And that'll go ahead and get us pressure on all the blue, the green, and the yellow system. Notice, by the way, the color changed. And also the fact that the little rat has got its little piece here. So now if I move my controls, you're going to notice that we have everything. So I can go ahead and I'll pop down the flaps. If I want to be a silly person, you can see them extending right now. And if I were really, really dumb, of course, I could go ahead and deploy it and directly. So that because this is so useful, you basically have one system plus the two independent systems that can quickly basically jump out. You can see our two engine pumps are not doing anything at this moment. So let's go ahead and pop back out here. Go ahead and click all these guys off and I'll shut those off directly. So they just kind of spool back down. Our pressure will slowly decrease. Notice, by the way, that our hydraulic brake segment... Uh, Inlander, I got to get that correct, I actually started puffing itself back up as soon as we had a hydraulic pressure available to it that could actually help us out here directly. The other thing to notice here, too, is just like we had on the 737, is the ability to isolate specific systems directly should we need to do it. So if we go ahead and uh, restore some pressure here, give it just a few moments to kind of puff back up. There it goes, looking pretty good. We actually have the ability to cut out individual components here. You can see all our servo controls have disabled themselves. And you notice again, they've got the different colors to the different components. So if I wanted to, I could actually cut out two different servo systems from my controls. And because of the way they've designed it, is even though I've knocked those systems out, I still have a pretty good amount of control at my disposal. Now, if I re-engage those, of course, we probably want those for the purposes of our flight here, we now have the ability to operate those other two systems as well. And you can see they're snapping on. Now, if I actually shut this off. I'll let it uh, depressurize real quick. Look on down here. You'll see that this is basically going to be the valve that sends the pressure off to something. And this is actually the pressure that we're generating at this time. You can see we've cut it off from the rest of the system. So it's not actually providing anything. Again, you can see it's going up towards the yellow. And again, it's coming away from that particular spot. So go ahead and engage that. Now on this, of course, we have the ability, just like we had on the other one, to actually start shutting down critical components. Now, one of the things that you'll probably observe here is the fact that we've got all sorts of warnings on our different spoilers here. Everything's now looking pretty good as far as that goes. Now, if I wanted to, you could actually shut off specific spoilers. I, again, I'd shut all those off. So now when I wiggle my controls, you can see that I've only got that one little spoiler that's rising up. So I've actually shut all this off. Let's see. If, I don't know why you'd leave. Um, actually, <laughs> let's be silly here. I'll leave number seven on there. You'll see that I just get that outside spoiler that's getting pressure. And again, this is in the event that one of these are leaking. We have the ability to actually shut them off individually to prevent that particular issue from getting worse. Of course, uh, we don't have the ability to shut those off, but I'm not worried about those too much. We're not even going to be able to see this particular system. So that's uh, unfortunately not one of those that we can see. But this is critical in an Airbus because remember on an Airbus, a lot of times they'll have that side controller too, which gives you a very, very different appearance. So as you can see, the hydraulic systems um, basically are there to help you move controls. Uh, the important thing that you have to remember is in the event that you've got a leak, you've got to isolate the leak and then use your other hydraulic systems for the purposes of basically continuing to control it. And when everything goes terrible, it's important that you would go ahead and try to find your manual backup systems. Remember, this trim wheel is your best friend in the event that you have a total hydraulic failure. Enjoy.